eight months part with my consultant, and I said, what's all the problems with my eyesight? And I kept hearing this during that time of three, six, 12 months of the group through stroke. And it was constantly being repeated. And at this stage, when I went to see her, I said, my vision. And she says, go and see an optician. That was it. Go and see an optician. So I went along, saw my local optician, and went, oh, you got a problem. And I said, I'm going to have to send you to hospital. Subsequently, she wrote a letter saying it was urgent. Sent me up to the hospital. I obviously went away. I got an appointment very soon. We come back. And then I saw the specialist at the hospital who uh, examined me and said, um, you know, this is all caused by the stroke. Um, so who said it was urgent? And so I felt a bit off by that. You know, obviously it sounded as though, was it me? No, it wasn't. Um, and I said, it was the optician. And he said, well, it isn't really. There's nothing we can do for you. Um, the stroke's caused it. And that's it. That will never be the same. And they were more interested in the fact that I'd had a stroke because I was so young. And I was fit, and I say I'm young because I am. And um, they said, but why? Why did it happen? And I said, I didn't know. We just didn't know why the stroke had come. Um, so that was it. And he says, well, if you're that concerned, he says, well, I'll see you back in three months. Here we get the three, six months part. So I went back. He says, nothing's changed, just the same, stroke. Sorry, nothing we can do for you. And it was just like that, goodbye. And that was it. So I left, none the wiser about stroke, none the wiser about my vision, and the subsequent impacts that it had on me. I received no treatment, nothing. And from where I am now, is a lot going back. I had to learn the hard way um, about getting around, adapting, and adapting is hard uh, if you're not on visual guidelines. And that's one of the bits that I missed. If someone could have pointed out to me or given me some idea of, of where I was and what was happening, it would have been fantastic. I need to have somebody with me 24 hours a day, but I was extremely lucky I had speech therapy for six years. Unfortunately, it wasn't the same with my vision problems. It was a year after my stroke, after bumping into somebody in a supermarket foyer and the other lady thinking that I was drunk, I asked my speech therapist if I could have more help. I could blind stick so people would see that I'd got a problem. So Cynthia, my speech therapist, got in touch with social services, went to an eye clinic and became registered partly sighted. I had some really good training with a blind social worker. At first we used to just walk around my small quiet village where I lived and then as I got more confident I learned how to deal with my uh, walking in a bigger town called Kendall. So it's a pity I only got help when I asked it myself even though the hospital knew I had vision problems but when asked it triggered a whole lot of help. After about I think we're about three or four months I was still in hospital. I went and saw, and I presume she was an ophthalmologist, and she did an eye test and diagnosed me with muscle weakness. I now know um, it was called nystagmus, um, and I wear glasses where uh, anyway. I'm very short sighted, and she put some temporary prisms on the inside of my glasses, and that helped tremendously. It was probably about 20 months into my stroke recovery that I plucked up the courage to see if I could drive again and that's when I went to um, a mobility centre and they did the visual field check and told me thankfully that my visual field was actually fine, that I was safe to drive. So that for me was a great big boost to my ego and, and, and my recovery, I think. In the hospital, I was given um, a series of exercises to do to try and strengthen the muscles. I'm not sure whether they worked or not. I found them very difficult to, to do. Like just looking up and looking down. I couldn't tell when I was looking up looking down so I did the exercises 
but um, and I think I was fairly compliant. But I found it very hard to to actually understand what my eyes were doing. It was, I think, there's some numbness, and it was it was difficult. Um, but I think that was the only kind of treatment I got for the for the visual effects. Um, long term, so I, was, I am 19 years post-stroke now. The prisms are inbuilt into my glasses. They really do help. Um, until I became a member of um, uh, stroke research groups, where I met some people who were involved in vision. And subsequently from there I began to learn a lot. I had actually someone actually examined me and told me exactly what happened to my eyesight. No one had ever taken the time to do it. Um, and so from that part I'm, I'm very kind to the people that I've met and for what they've done for me as a person and mainly for my quality of life has come back. I'm more confident, I do things, but it was a hard way and I feel that people shouldn't have to go through that. Not when there's things available for them to